What is the freakiest or creepiest thing that's ever happened to you? Serious. It's M. Thank you guys for joining us today. Please do like this video and subscribe so we can keep bringing you guys spooky stories. Story 1. I've told this story before, but it is still by far the creepiest thing that has happened to me. When I was 16, I had just gotten my license as well as my first after-school job. Since school ended about an hour before I had to be at work, I would sometimes park in the adjacent parking lot and take a nap. This was a shopping trip with a grocery store, restaurants, and a bank on a fairly busy Friday afternoon. As I'm sitting there drifting off, I see a black Denali pull up behind me, blocking my car in the spot. A gentleman jumps out in a business suit and asks if I can help him. He looks nice enough, and I'm assuming he is looking for directions. He starts to explain to me that his wife and he were supposed to be signing for a loan at the bank behind us today so that they can purchase a boat, but she's stuck in a meeting and can't make it. He then asks if I wouldn't mind posing as her and signing the documents for her. I'm completely blown away, but super shy, and feel the need to let him down easy. Stupid, I know. So I tell him I don't think they'll believe I'm your wife. He then tells me it's fine. He has her license with him, which he shows me, and she has the same hair and eye color as me, so they won't know. At this point, I'm freaking out. I start to notice how disheveled he looks. He's sweating, and surprise, surprise, no wedding ring. I just want him away from my car, so I start telling him I can't help him, that he needs to go ask someone else. He says it's fine, it'll be quick, just jump in my truck and I'll take you over there. Like I said, this bank was in the same shopping strip. There would be no need to drive to it. Even in my gullible teenage mind, I know this story is complete BS. I'm telling him no over and over while scanning the parking lot for anyone who might be noticing, but of course, no one has. He then starts getting irate, telling me that I'm perfect and the only one who can do it, how beautiful I am, can he at least take me to dinner, and so on. I start trying to close my window and he reaches through, grabs my shoulder, and starts trying the door handle, which was luckily locked. I'm so frozen, I don't even really react. I can't go anywhere as he's blocking me in. Suddenly, I'm not really sure why, I just blurt out that I'm only 16, and for some reason, that freaks him out. He slowly backs away, gets in his truck, and leaves. I called the police afterwards, but they never followed up with me. But I just know he had found that license and made up that story as a way to lure women into his truck, and it scared the hell out of me that he could have convinced someone before. I think it's pretty obvious what was going to happen to OP if she had gotten to the car with the dude, so it's great that she finally found the courage to not. Now, what I don't know is why exactly this guy decided to dip as soon as OP said she was 16. Maybe it was his own sense of morality considering how young she is, or maybe it was because he didn't want to run the risk with indulging a minor. Story 2. I was home alone, laying down on my living room floor and hardcore spacing out at the ceiling. I heard my mother scream on my front porch. I rushed out, but she wasn't there. I ran around the outside of my house. Not a single person in sight. It 1000% sounded like my mom, and it curdled my bones because it was so raw and animalistic in its sound. I called her right away. Mom picks up the phone and I ask her if she's alright. She responds that she is and tells me to hold on for a minute while she pulls over into the parking lot of a business. She was driving and didn't want to talk on the phone at the same time. Seconds later, I heard a lot of noise and my mom screamed. An eternity stretches on before mom is calm enough to say anything coherent. She goes on to tell me how the car in front of her and the one behind her, before she pulled over, the ones that continued on the same path of travel that she had been on, had been struck by a speeding semi that ran a red light at the next intersection. It was a terrible accident with extensive injuries. The semi I clipped the rear of the front vehicle and front of the rear vehicle. My mom's car would have been hit dead center. We always joke that we are psychic, as this is not the first instance like it that we have had, but it was definitely the most freaky out of the bunch. Too long didn't read, I'm psychic and saved my mom's life. I typically read these I'm psychic posts with a lot of scrutiny, but honestly, this one might have convinced me. I mean, OP probably isn't psychic, but I would say something intervened, which led to OP calling their mom, and that saved their mom's life. So whatever OP is, I would just be thankful that no one got hurt.
Story 3. I was probably nine years old in about 1995. At that time, all the schools and parents were warning us of stranger danger. It seemed like a lot of kids were getting kidnapped because they were being tripped into helping the kidnappers finding a lost pet. One day, I was riding my bike alone on the street, a very populated area with lots of kids out playing and whatnot, and a green two-door car pulled up with a woman driving and a guy in the passenger seat. The guy calls out the window to me, hey kid, we lost our dog. Can you help us find her? I can still remember the feeling I felt. It was like sirens were going off, and I thought for a split second that this was it. I was gonna be kidnapped. A rush of what felt like burning hot adrenaline stuffed through my body. It felt like I could hear everything 10 times louder and see everything 10 times better. I've never felt anything like that before. I hopped off my bike, pulled the front tire up so I could turn around faster, and I booked it home. I was shaking and tears were pouring down my face, even though I wasn't crying. I got home and told my mom what happened. She called the police, but I'm not sure if the people were ever caught. Crazy. It's a good thing OP had just got the message of these exact people's ploy, which set off those warning bells. I know I as a kid was pretty naive and was lucky no one ever tried this on me, because I know I for sure would have gone to help them. Call me people pleaser all you want, because it is most definitely true. Story 4. My cousin and I were probably targeted for a scam, but I don't still know how or why. We were six years apart, but went to the same high school at different times. Small school, graduating class is about 60. Years later, we're on a road trip together several states away and decide to stop at a huddle house for coffee. We walk in and the guy at the next table turns around and smiles and says, You went to Anytown High School, right? When we say yes, he says he and his girlfriend, also at the table, smiling and not talking, went there too. We didn't recognize them, but smiled politely. Commented that it was a small world. He starts to rapidly talk about different things from the school, just disjointed comments that were a bit odd. He talked like a salesman almost. At first, we smiled and nodded, but he had weird facts wrong. So we asked what year he graduated. He claimed not to remember. So we asked follow-up questions, and he got cagey. Suddenly, the girlfriend does, this isn't working, and they suddenly pay and leave their food untouched. We since have determined they didn't go to our school and have tried to figure out how he knew what he did, to no avail. Story 5. When I was about 5, I was visiting my grandma in the city with my mom, dad, and sister. We were walking towards the city center, so it was pretty crowded. I remembered letting go of my dad's hand and then feeling him grab back of it, hold a few minutes later. I kept walking. I don't know how far. I hear my dad shouting from behind me and grabbing my other arm. I hear him say sorry, and I look up and I realize I was holding hands with an old man that I didn't know. My dad assumed that I'd accidentally grabbed onto this man's hand, thinking he was my dad. I remember him pulling me away all embarrassed and I was just thinking, but the man grabbed my hand. So basically, I think some guy tried to snatch me out of a crowded area. I still don't understand why my dad thought I grabbed onto his hand. My parents were normally quite paranoid about strangers. He must have been distracted when talking to my grandma. Maybe he was trying not to freak you out, OP. Or your memory could be forgetting that the guy who grabbed your hand truly did it by accident and was super apologetic. Either that or your dad just decided not to listen to you when you said the guy grabbed you. My guess is he was just feeling super guilty about almost losing you and didn't know how to process it. Story 6. I have a very vivid memory of waking up terrified in the middle of the night and running to my parents' room because I saw a ghost when I was a kid. He followed me and stared at me from the doorway as I crawled into their bed and hid under the covers. We looked at each other for a few minutes and then he left. I was so shaken that I stayed awake the rest of the night until my parents woke up in the morning. I was an adult when I realized that it was not a ghost and actually someone scoping out our house in the middle of the night. Somebody commented, I see opening this thread while lying in bed was a mistake. Story 7. I had a roommate who was always a complete a-hole, never was polite or kind to anyone. One night after I helped his drunk bed to butt, he turned to me and said, I really appreciate you, and I know you don't like seeing me like this. You've been a good roommate and good friend. Thank you. I found him dead the next morning due to an undiagnosed heart condition that alcohol had amplified. Not creepy or freaky in the normal sense, but I will never forget how serious and genuine he was in his last words spoken ever. It was the first time I'd ever heard him compliment anyone. This was kind of sad compared to some of the other ones. It's nice that the last things the dude said were words of kindness, as I'm sure it helped OP a little bit more to deal with the grief. That being said, I know I would still feel very caught in the middle about his death, mainly because I think we as humans want to forgive those who have passed and blame ourselves. But sometimes it is important just because someone died, it doesn't not make them a D-bag.
Story 8. I came downstairs to tell my grandmother that daddy is sleeping with his eyes open. He's type 1 diabetic and has been drinking. He took insulin to counter the rise in blood sugar, but wasn't paying attention and took too much. When the ambulance finally got there, we lived on the outskirts of a small town that didn't have a hospital. He was about five minutes away from death. If we had waited any longer, he would have died. Please take care of your diabetic pals. If something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. Know what to do in the event of a high or low sugar problem. Story 9. In 1991, I went to a 7-Eleven by myself when we were at my grandmother's house. There was another kid about my age, we looked similar, etc. I bought a Slurpee and walked back to my grandma's house and that was that. The other kid was kidnapped and murdered pretty much right after leaving that 7-Eleven. The only thing I can think of that kept it from being me was maybe I won some sort of cosmic coin toss. The police are pretty sure they know who did it but couldn't prove it, and to this day it still weirds me out. I'm 41 now and live in that neighborhood. I'm sure some of you guys listening out there have also gone through the metaphor coin toss OP was talking about, where you somehow survive something that you honestly didn't think you were going to, albeit it's someone else's detriment. The feeling relief conflicted with the guilt can sometimes just be all-consuming, even if you know you did nothing wrong. Story 10. I was alone in my house with my stepdad. I went to the bathroom. When I sat down on the toilet, that's when I saw someone was trying to open the door. I pushed it and said occupied, but whatever was at the other side kept trying to open the door. I called my stepdad and I heard him from the kitchen saying, yeah? At that point, I was terrified. It suddenly stopped. I checked the whole house for anyone other than my stepdad. Didn't find anybody. Then I went to the other bathroom and then used it. Still didn't know what the hell was at the other side of the door. Story 11. I could hear a woman's voice singing almost inaudibly on my daughter's baby monitor. It happened a few nights in a row. I began thinking back over all the doors that opened on their own and weird noises in the house. After a week, I had almost convinced myself the house was haunted. Then, one night, I heard the woman's voice clearly singing for the first time. It was Taylor Swift singing Bad Blood. Turns out, I just live in an old house and my cheap Chinese baby monitor just can hardly pick up the local pop station if it's a clear night. Story 12. Mom died five months ago and I moved across the state into her apartment to be closer to family. I swear I heard her call my name one night. It felt so natural, hearing her voice in her own apartment, but she'd been dead over a month. I'm sure it was just a nearly asleep hallucination, but it was spooky. Somebody commented, my grandpa died almost a year ago. My grandma says she hears him call her name in the mornings fairly often, just the way he used to wake her in the mornings. She thinks it's grandpa visiting her. Hmm. This one to me could be ghosts, but I think OP had the right train of thinking that this was most likely just an auditory hallucination caused by OP literally about to fall asleep. But I would also let OP think whatever they want if it brought them some level of comfort. Story 13. I would sleepwalk as a child. Usually I'd wake up in the living room, or I would freak myself out and wake up in the basement. On one occasion, I had wandered outside. I was 7 or 8, and I woke up standing in the middle of my backyard on a super foggy morning, right around sunrise. I quickly figured out which direction my house was and ran back to bed. I never told my parents about it because I figured they would be mad at me for going outside, when I should have been asleep. Story 14. One evening, for some reason, I thought about a person that I had gone to college with but had not seen in more than 30 years. So I decided to Google her name to see what she had done with her life. I found her obituary. It had been posted earlier that day. If I had Googled her one day earlier, I would have never known that she had died. Story 15. One night, I had a dream that a coworker killed me with an axe, and when I got to work the next day, she was telling a fellow coworker that she had a dream that she killed me with a knife. Sort of an odd coincidence. She never did try to kill me, but it was a little bit creepy. I like to think that maybe OP mentioned it to someone, and the coworker overheard, and decided to pull a little prank on OP by pretending they had the dream about killing them. If not, then talk about one hell of a coincidence. Story 16. Had a dream that I was going to get into a car accident. Woke up and the feeling that I was going to get into an accident just kind of stayed with me. Later that morning, some idiot ran a red and T-boned the car I was in. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.